Hello everybody, thank you for being here. Today we have two jewelers from our show, uh, Cesar Lim and Vlad Labrowski. We will be talking about their work, their artwork. All right, go ahead you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank, thank you for you. inviting us. Hello everyone. Hi. Uh, I'm Cesar. And I'm Vlad, yes. Our medium is fine jewelry. We basically came from different backgrounds. My background when I first started art was in fashion. And I transitioned into fine jewelry after I moved to Los Angeles uh, because I wanted to, to, to work on a medium that is sort of more permanent. And Vlad is... I'm used to being an engineer and I'm still am a software engineer. But I do a little bit of art and help them uh, with the design as much as I can. You want to talk about how you got into art? I was always interested in art, I think, since I was a child. Uh, never really interested in other subjects in school but art. But when I was in high school, my teacher, my art teacher, pushed me to participate in a scholarship, a national scholarship for art, for, for art, for young artists. And he asked me to create six or seven paintings. Uh, and for some reason, I don't know why I focus on uh, like figure paintings. And so he um, entered it in the competition and I won and they gave me a full white scholarship to go into a fashion school, FIT in New York or Parsons. So I decided to go to FIT. From there, when I graduated, I worked in some fashion design houses in New York and Klein for a few years. And after that, I was hired in Italy to work uh, for a, a, a big manufacturing company that produces for Giorgio Armani and uh, Gaultier and uh, Emmanuel Ungaro. I came back to the United States, I moved to Los Angeles and I wanted to do something more uh, permanent. Yeah. Yeah, so that's when I transitioned into jewelry. And here we are. <laughs> So we have some uh, PowerPoint, we have some pictures. We have some, yeah, this particular collection that, uh, that we created was inspired after our trip to Asia. We did a, a charity work in an island in the Philippines. And after that, we went to Thailand for some relaxation. What really struck us with that trip was how the roofings of the homes of, of most of the houses are made out of corrugated iron metal and when you're flying into an island you can see the different shades of colors of the roofs and it triggered something in me that I wanted to create that kind of coloring we decided when we came back to work with copper but lined in gold because copper oxidizes and it leaves some kind of a, a coloring on your skin when you've been wearing it. So, but I only, we, we only wanted the color to be visible outside and you know not to stain your skin. So we lined everything in gold. But the outside part is a combination that in this particular piece, it's a combination of gold. We melt gold on top of copper. So the gold part doesn't oxidize. Uh, same thing here. The difference is that uh, with our trip to Phuket, you know, with the, we saw some frogs, you know, in, uh, in the jungle and things like that. And that kind of inspired me to create this, this leaf with frogs. And of course, we had to add some stones to the piece to not make it look so generic. So we added diamonds and emeralds and rubies. Same thing here. We, it's the same process. You can see gold here very well. Yeah, yeah, you can see it, it pops the gold from the copper. And this one, we wanted to create that skin, the, the skin pattern of a crocodile. We did it in sterling silver, and we applied white gold on top with the diamonds and the sapphires. 
And this is just all about the ocean, the pearls, the different shades of pearls. This is just a variation of the copper piece, except we use ebony, ebony wood. We, we, we hand carved the ebony wood and applied the gold and, and diamonds on top. And also the work underneath, which you can't see on this piece, is also lined with, with gold. This one in particular piece is a commission from a client. She had this uh, morganite stone, which is more than 100 carats, and she doesn't know what to do with them. Uh, so she asked me, is, what is it that we can do uh, for this big stone that she would be able to wear it and also not be too serious, something that's a little bit more fun, uh, but she wanted to wear it in different ways. So we came up with a snake having eggs. The main one is the, 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 the big stone. We made it uh, so she can wear it as, as, a, uh, as a pin or she can wear it as a pendant. Of course, we added the sapphires and the South Sea pearls. This one is uh, the rose petal, right? Yeah. So we created this kind of petal uh, in rubies. And as the curl is drying up, we added the diamonds in there. This one is very interesting. When we were in Asia, we asked who makes this box. And uh, we finally found the, the person that made it. So I asked this person to make me sort of like a, a clutch. And I asked him to create it made out of a balloon curl. Because I had an idea of mounting sort of like a, a bow to the piece and applying some other precious elements to it. Uh, this one was inspired by the stone, actually, the center stones. Yeah. We, we saw these moonstones and it was the most beautiful quality moons that I've ever seen. It's iridescent, it changes colors into this blue and shades of red. And I wanted to just showcase the, the, the stone. So we didn't want to do anything else to it except focus on the, the gemstone in the middle and then highlight it with uh, some Burmese sapphires. Which so kind of frames the color in the translucency of the uh, moonstones in the middle. This was actually inspired by the trips in San Gabriel Mountains by the forest. In spring, those little different colors. We don't get a lot of flowers here in the high desert, but we get some and they still very, so it's kind of like a foresty look With those to it. Yeah. flowers. Yeah, a little, like little, they don't yeah. have much of a color other than yeah. poppies, so that was very interesting to see. This one is really interesting. This superb Jedi uh, has a very special, special meaning to the client. Uh, it was uh, given to her by her parents when she was a little girl. It's a baby. It's so a baby as a baby, it. raised it. But the quality of the Jedi is so incredible. Uh, and she asked me, she wanted to wear it, but she can't because it's so small that she was a child. Uh, what is it that I can create of this piece that she would be able to wear it to remember her parents? And so we decided that uh, even though we don't want, we didn't want to cut the piece, the stone in half to create um, an earring that she could wear and that she could, you know, tell the story. Uh, it's this jadeite with Burmese <clears throat> rubies, sapphire, and diamonds. It's a tradition for the baby girl to have some kind of jewelry. It can be gold, yeah. it could be jade, so it's yeah. not uh, like unique to her. It's like that. Traditional thing. This is but actually, it's very little. It's yeah. like a tiny, tiny bracelet that you can put on a baby. This is actually one of my favorite pieces for, yeah, I that, that I've I've done for for a client because when we when she saw it, she she just cried because it 
have a lot of meaning to her. If there are questions. I really, really love mixing metals, not one particular metal. I think the more you mix metals, the more interesting the, the outcome is. I mean, it's easier to work in one particular metal when you're working on a piece. So if you're working just on gold, it's a lot easier to just do it from beginning to end. But if you're mixing two, three different metals, it's a lot more challenging, but at the end, it's much more rewarding because you get so many different effects when you, create, when you mix two, three metals in one piece. That's a hard question actually to answer <laughs> because I say all of them inspired me. This show, when we do it actually outdoors in Beverly Hills, which is one of the most incredible art shows there is in the country, you can't help but get inspired. Even with your next door neighbor when you're showing there, it's just overwhelming the amount of talent that is in the show. Any artist gets inspired by what they see that is uh, magnificent, you know? No, I'm right in the middle. It, it's, it, it's about the work, you know, not the medium that inspires me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, it's just colors. Or the feeling, yeah. or how something. The emotion, the, your emotional response to the piece. It triggers something in your, I don't know, it's, it's emotional. How I respond to a piece. Something when you see a common medium, but used in a different way, that kind of triggers something in you, how you can do something yeah. with your medium, how you can create that effect, yeah. like pieces were very heavy, why don't we do something light or the other way around, right. you know? No, we don't, unfortunately. We do Beverly Hills and we do private showings, which is we have a, a client base of collectors in New York City that we do private showings in New York City. And of course, uh, here in Los Angeles, we have our client base who comes to our studio. We used to have a, a gallery in Beverly Hills about a year ago. But then, well, for, for 10 years, for 10 years we closed yeah. it last year. And then we moved downtown Los Angeles uh, to our studio. And they just make appointments and they come. It's a lot of fun to do. Um, I see so many different incredible artists around me, which some of them became really great friends yeah. over the years. Um, it's inspiring, it's outdoors, it's beautiful weather, except when it rains. <laughs> uh, we we, oh, we did it once, we once. Now. There's food, there's, it's just fun. It's young, old, and in between, it's a, it's a great mix of, of people from different works of life, just loving and loving art. And that's what's so great about that show. Yeah, we used to come to the show before we were exhibiting. Yeah, before we even... Uh, so it's yeah. always kind of... It's, it's always been very, a favorite of ours, right? Yeah. yeah it's... Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody. Thank you.